Elvis Presley once flew 800 miles to eat a whole loaf of bread hollowed out filled with peanut butter, blueberry jam, and bacon. I feel sick already. Do I really have to do this one? The Fool's Gold Loaf was a whole loaf of white bread hollowed out filled with a tub of peanut butter, tub of blueberry preserve, and a whole pound of bacon, so about half a kilo. <laughs> I have no idea how this one's gonna work out, really don't. So first of all, we're gonna make the blueberry preserve. So in this pan, I've got 400 grams of blueberries. I'm gonna to add to this 250 grams of jam sugar and the juice of one lemon. So in the first instance, we've got to bring this to a heat and start to crush the blueberries with a potato masher. This would be really promising if it weren't for the fact that I know what this is going to be used for. Do I actually have a jam? I have a jam thermometer! Who knew? It's really showing my maturity how much I like the fact that the guidance on this is hard crack, soft crack, hardball. I'm going to tokenistically stick this in. Feels like the right thing to do in bringing this up to a jam. Okay, I can officially tell you that the temperature's gone down. This is really tedious. I don't know what I'm doing. Every episode I make of this, I have this huge sense of imposter syndrome thinking, ah, oh, this is, I'm actually a better cook than this. This is just not doing me any favors. The temperature has been static for the best part of 10 minutes. It's worth saying that Nick Andalakis, a young cook who actually served Elvis the Fool's Gold Loaf originally, he said that it was blueberry preserve, but if you see a lot of the recipes online, it will say grape jelly. Apparently that's because the original brand of blueberry preserve got discontinued, but I wanted to go for the original before I get discontinued. Yeah, that's officially not shifting in terms of temperature. I don't want to burn those, so I'm just gonna presume that this is gonna end up a bit tits up anyway, so let's just leave it as it is. Here I've got about 500 grams of peanuts that I've roasted in the oven for 10 minutes just to give them a bit of a browning. In theory, at this point, all I have to do to get peanut butter is blend this for four or five minutes and just add a little bit of peanut oil if need be. Please work, please work, please work. It's such a peaceful thing to do. So at the moment we've got this powdery. Okay, I'm gonna chicken out at this point and uh, add some peanut oil. Three tablespoons. That is just a sexy, sexy thing. I think it's bacon time. I'm gonna start shingling out a full pound of bacon. You say a pound of bacon, but I mean, this is a, it's a visual exercise. I've got an overspill. This is an insane amount of bacon. Okay. Let's go. This is bacon that I definitely left in the oven for too long, but let's just go with the justification that Americans like their bacon crispy. I remember reading that Elvis ate the whole fool's gold loaf, which Apparently, it's supposed to serve eight to 10 people. I'm <laughs> really daunted and I haven't even put it in the bread. The original sandwich was a whole loaf, insides scooped out. So first thing we've got to do, scoop out the middle. So first up, we have a full tub of blueberry preserve. One tub of blueberry preserve down. Now, a lovely homemade peanut butter. And now I'm gonna to start to shingle in our bacon. Tip. Oh my goodness. I'm really not even sure what's the best way to tackle this. It's already oozing. This is going to be the most unedifying thing I've done on camera in a while. It's really good. That's actually delicious. The reason why it's so delicious is because that peanut butter is the best peanut butter I've ever tasted. It's hitting all those taste receptors that kind of just makes you want to eat more. It's, it's also weird for me as an English person, I didn't grow up with a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Maybe I'd be a little bit more stoked on if it was hitting some of my nostalgic notes like a peanut butter and craver sandwich. If you haven't tried peanut butter and craver sandwiches, do that right now. But he ate a whole loaf of this. This is supposed to feed eight to 10 people. Honestly, this is just making me kind of sad. It's so rich, it's so sweet, it's salty. And it just makes me think about his health in his final years and particularly his final months. Elvis died in 1977, a year after he made this journey for this sandwich. You hear stories about his final months just hiding himself away, getting a bit heavier, eating lots of unhealthy food. I don't know, I look at this and I just think, you know, it makes me, it makes me sad. It makes me think of someone whose mental health is probably not great and physical health is taking a bit of a pummeling as well. I don't want to end on a down note. It's not the end of the world. Got peanut butter left over, got quavers in the cupboard. Tomorrow, time for my dream sandwich. Thanks a million for watching. If there's a meal or moment in history you want me to recreate, then let me know in the comments and please do consider subscribing.